Hello and welcome to EHI TV. Uh, my name is Lynn Whitfield. I'm Managing Editor of eHealth Insider. With me, I've got our Editorial Director, John Hoxmer, again. Last week, we said we'd be back after the Public Accounts Committee hearing into the National Audit Office report, the third report on the National Programme for IT in the NHS. We said it would be very lively. John, you got to go along, and I think it was very lively. Yeah, it was um, very lively. It was um, packed. And it was very hot as well. <laughs> it's always really hot. In it is all really hot. And um, the poor recorder from um, Hansard, who was um, sat there, goes, what's all this about? These things are usually empty. Yeah? <laughs> so um, it, it's not typical, uh, those hearings, to have it quite so jammed. Um, but it was um, jammed because um, there were some very um, big witnesses about the world's biggest civil IT project as the, um, as the hearing was um, badged um, very early on. And it was an interesting session. There was certainly quite a bit of snippets there. There was stuff for the Cognoscenti to follow. Um, some of it was quite bad-tempered, um, bad-natured, um, tetchy in places. A couple of good jokes. Yeah, um, I, I was live blogging it, and um, people can go and read the transcript on screen. It certainly did get very tired and very bad-tempered towards the end, didn't it? So David Nicholson was in a terrible mood. <laughs> he was in a terrible mood, and th there was quite a few exchanges about sort of them not recognizing data or providing data to the NAO. Um, I've never seen um, Chief Executive of the NHS um, have, have quite a public falling out with um, a representative of the NAO before. But th there were a few things which um, were concrete, which did come out. F first of all, um, CSE gave a pretty robust defense of their position. Um, and there is certainly no indication that they're about to walk away. Quite the opposite. So th this is walking away from the deal up in the North Midlands and East where they've been trying to get in on my soft Lorenzo. That's the one that everyone's wondering if the government will now can on the back of the report. Yes, and I think um, it's clear from the PAC um, hearing that the government certainly doesn't intend to, the government um, department rather than Department of Health, um, certainly isn't minded to can that deal. It is looking to try and find a um, version of it um, that is modified, that is substantially different, that will deliver something. Well, you went along to see Christine Conley um, the morning after the PAC hearing, and she gave you quite a broad outline of what that deal might look like. I mean, it's got to be agreed, but you did get quite a bit of insight into that, didn't yes, you? Yes, I mean, she, she'd already given some pretty big um, clues um, to the Public Accounts Committee. Um, well, saying she gave a good account of herself, I, I thought. Um, in, in the tetchiness, she, she didn't sort of um, rise to the bait um, in the same way that her boss, David Nicholson, um, did. Um, I, th I think the key sort of headlines on a new CSE deal is that terms of a proposed deal seem to have been agreed. Um, now, that's a long way short of being um, finalized or approved. There's some quite complex approvals that are needed. First of all, um, the national program itself needs to clear a major projects review, mm -hmm. um, which began this week um, being run by the Cabinet Office. I'm assuming that happens. Um, then Treasury and the um, Cabinet Office need to sign off on, on any new deal. Um, they may well require changes. They may say no. They may say yes. Assuming that happens, then it goes back to the Secretary of State, Andrew Lansing. Fundamentally, we're going to see a deal which changes um, both the volume and the scope of delivery. Remember, the original deal um, was about delivering a standardized system to every NHS organization um, in that part of um, England. Um, we're going to see reduction in both the scope and the volume and an atomization of um, Lorenzo. It's going to be broken up into bite-sized chunks. Because Christine was saying it's not going to be just like London and South. It's not just going to be less functionality, fewer trusts, everyone else will have to find their own way forward. She's talking about this flexible modular development. We were just joking. Everyone's going to get their own Lego brick, perhaps. You, you go and put it on top of the system that you, you've got already. So, so what are the big questions that we still don't know about this deal? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, potentially the idea that your bits of Lego get stuck in the hoover, that's um, <laughs> an interesting sort of um, concept to play with. Um, I think the bits of the deal that we don't know about is, assuming it's reduced in volume, um, then what happens um, for those trusts that either don't want or um, aren't in a position to take um, a Lorenzo module. Um, and, and remember, a lot of those modules are still at an early stage of being piloted and tested. So that's the big one, first of all. And how, how does it cover all trust in that area? Is it only going to be a small number? And that's where the, the example of BT in London mm -hmm. and South, I think, is, is, is an interesting guy. Um, the, the other one is what 
happens to those interim systems they've already put in. Yeah. And, and there was great play made both at the Public Accounts Committee hearing and in my interview with Christine Connolly about interim systems. At the very early stages of this program, CSC shipped in a lot of IPMs, which were meant to be in um, for a strictly short term. And lots of TPP as well. They're, saying, they're now coming out and saying, well, we've done rather well, TPP. Well, t t TPP has already made the transition from being interim mm -hmm. to strategic. Um, so once you know, TPP was meant to be replaced by the GP um, component of Lorenzo, now that's been taken off the card some time ago, um, and TPP is there for keeps. I think that we're going to see almost exactly the same thing happen with IPM. Um, trusts mm -hmm. that have got IPM now, uh, that is going to be the strategic solution on which some layers or modules or Lego bricks of um, Lorenzo are then plugged in. Um, so we don't have any confirmation on that, but that's my best guess. Oh, and GP systems come out as well. We went and asked a few um, IT directors in the North Midlands and East what they wanted to see off the back of the NAO report. And some of the things they're saying are, yes, uh, it didn't tell them a lot they didn't know. This is broadly what they're expecting. Also, they now really need some clarity about the contract. They need some clarity about standards. They also want some national direction to make sure that uh, the baby doesn't, as they put it, get thrown out with the bathwater. Um, we would like to keep uh, this debate going, and therefore we're going to have another of our Friday tweet chats that will be on May the 27th at 12 o'clock. Use the hashtag EHIPAC. Come and talk about the NAO report, the PAC, and what should happen next. And we will see you next week. <laughs>